This is a very quick look around Adobe Audition. I have a complete course, well, I think it's complete anyway, in much more detail that you can find on voiceovermasterclass.com. But this is just for complete beginners who have got Adobe Audition and have no idea what to do next when you have this horrible gray mass of stuff in front of you. So, first of all, if you want to record anything, you've got to make sure that your system is connected. And you do this in Edit and Preferences and Audio Hardware. And there, I know I've got a Yamaha Steinberg box, so mine's connected all right. And in fact, there's no other choice. So <laughs> that's pretty good, isn't it? But yours may say the computer. It may say another interface box like a Focusrite or something like that. So it, you just need to find out in your computer what is making the sound and what records the sound. All right. So that's the hardware. Don't worry about these other settings for now. You'll get ASIO, MME and Wasapi, but just stick it whatever is the default. It should be fine. So we're out of that. We know we're connected. So we need to start a new file. So file, new, audio file, the middle one there. You could have multi-track session. You may actually want to make a CD. Remember them. So we'll have audio file or control plus shift plus N also does the same thing. Now it asks you, what do you want? Do you want to call it anything? I'll just call this test for now. Sample rate is 48,000. For video production, that's what you choose. Uh, if it's for audio, generally it's 44.1. For a podcast, it doesn't actually matter. But we're going to record a voiceover, and it's in mono. It's not like I've got a guest with me and we're panning them in stereo. So it's mono there, forget 5.1. The bit depth, 24 is absolutely fine. We're going to record in a WAV format, in other words, big file. And then once we put it all together as a podcast, then we export it as a very small MP3 file. And the separate section on mastering will tell you all about that and also the metadata you have to put in. So we'll say that's OK for now. As I say, it doesn't really matter what that's on. But, um, you know, 44.1 is generally the actual sample rate for CDs and for audio work and not for video. So we click OK. And there we have, well, a slightly less blank screen, slightly less intimidating. And you see, because it's open, test is there and test is there. When we add more, there'll be more files down on this side as well. Now, how do you record? Well, you can either click this little button down here or you can actually do shift and space as well. But we'll just click this down here. And as I'm speaking, it records and the waveform goes along. And I've got the levels just right. If in audition, your levels are much lower than that, so you can hardly see a waveform at all, then you need to boost the input into your computer. If it's much more than that, it's likely to distort when you start shouting. Uh, but even when I shout, hopefully that wasn't distorted for you. So that's pretty healthy. And you see on the side here, this is decibels. You'll learn a lot about decibels when it comes to working in audio. Um, but basically, it's infinity at the middle. And it will go up to about minus three when we normalize, so-called normalize later. And you can see the levels again at the bottom here. And if you want to make these a little bit bigger, by the way, maybe that's a bit too big. Well, I'll take it down again or whatever. And all these windows can be made bigger and smaller. You've probably noticed this big number here, and that looks like it's seconds. In fact, it is. And if you wanted to change it, by the way, I'll stop recording now by pushing the space bar. So there we go. If you wanted to change this to anything, you go to time display down here and then you can change it to what you like. But it should really be on decimal, which is minutes, seconds and deciseconds. Minutes, seconds and deciseconds there. Uh, just forget the rest. There are all these SMPTE things are for people doing video work when you can actually import uh, video into Adobe Audition. You can synchronize to it and do all clever stuff. All musicians want bars and beats, man. So we just want normal decimal, all right? Now, the way it looks for me may not be the way it looks for you. Window, workspace. I've actually got classic on there, so that's where the windows are. I could click some other things here, but I don't want to confuse you. So if yours doesn't look like mine, go to window, workspace, classic, and there we go. So now I'm going to stop talking to you, and I'm going to play back here. Put the cursor wherever you want it to start, 
and push the spacebar. So you can hardly see a waveform at all. Then you need to boost the input into your computer. So that's what I was just saying to you. And did you notice that this little yellow line went back to the beginning of it again? It's unlike, say, a video editing program where you stop and start and it continues. You can change that if you like. And there's loads of things you can change in Edit, Preferences. I won't go all through this now, but if you want to change the way it plays back and record, all of my things are down here in Edit, Preferences, and you'll find them all down there, okay? This is the Windows version. I, in Mac, it's slightly different, but you'll find in the Preferences. So what do we do here if we don't want, say, that section there? So you can hardly see a waveform at all. We don't want me to say that. So I shall highlight it by clicking to the left, drag to the right, that's now highlight. If I want to get rid of it, I push the delete key. It's gone. And now it goes straight from that. Then you need to boot uh, uh, whatever you want to do. And so that means you can put whole sections. You can record the whole podcast and you didn't like the middle section. You think it might work better at the end. Let's pretend that's the middle section. So I'm going to control exit just like you do. So control or command plus X. It's now in the memory. I now want to put it at the end. So you can either go right to the end, somewhere like here, or you can actually push the end key on your keyboard and now push Control V, just like text, and it's at the end. And you can tidy up and get rid of little gaps as well by doing the same sort of thing, by highlighting there and pushing Delete. Then once you've got everything in the right order, then you just save it and it will save as test because you're saving the same thing. A very important thing you need to know about any audio recording program is that they are destructive. In other words, it doesn't keep a previous version of it. If you make a change to it now, you'll never get back to the original. If it's a situation where you may need that again, then it's file not save, but save as and call it as test two or test three or something like that. OK, so that's a very, very basic look around what Adobe Audition is. It's extremely basic, but at least it will get you started. And if you're interested in a full course, then please check out voiceovermasterclass.com.